Hey expats and travelers alike, today we're here to talk about expat life in Madrid. We've broken it down into three parts, moving, living, and working. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our review preview show. Madrid ran away with the poll at 55% of your votes. Josh and I are pretty excited to talk to you about Madrid because our expat adventure actually started there way back in 2009. We moved to Madrid. It was our first city abroad and then it was game over from there. And we loved it so much and we were thrilled to share the city with you. However, we know it's 2020 and a lot has changed. So let's start with moving to Madrid. We love Madrid, so we're happy to give you information so you can experience it like we did. When we moved there, I started off on a student pass. The paperwork was fairly easy with local police reports, a few things to fill out and get notarized and such. I was a student who also worked in a school, so this visa sufficed. Kaylee was a little different. Yeah, so I went to Madrid as an au pair, and the family I worked for did a great job trying to find an au pair visa like they have in France. However, Spain didn't have any type of visa like that, so we traveled a lot outside of the EU. Yeah. For those of you looking to actually get a visa, you have a few options. If you're from the EU, you don't need one, but what about those who aren't from the EU? Work and student visas are the most common. Just like what I had to do, there will be paperwork involved. For work visas, your employer should assist you in the application process. You will need your contract to get the visa, but you can find everything you need at the Spanish Foreign Ministry website, and we'll put that in the description below. It's not that difficult of a process, it's just paperwork. For a student visa like I had, you have to be enrolled in a school or an exchange program. You'll need proof of that when you apply. Both visas are fairly easy, just be prepared to run around the city like I did and get proper documents that you need. When you get to Madrid, you will get a NIE or NIE or Número de Identificación de Extranjeros. Look at you with the Spanish, how fancy. That is just an ID number for foreigners. So for those of you who didn't understand what he just said, it's an ID number. Overall, Madrid is a great place for expats to move to. A lot of them come from Latin American countries because obviously the language isn't a barrier. Well, it kind of depends on who you talk to because some Spanish will say that they don't speak Spanish. They actually speak Mexican, a different dialect. Yeah, even if they're not from well, Mexico. Eh. Just to give you guys a quick history of Madrid, it became the capital of Spain in the early 1600s. Now in the 1900s, Spain had a dictator named Franco. And if you become an expat in Spain and have Spanish friends, you'll surely hear something about him. Many of my Spanish friends had at least something to say. But the two things that really stuck out is that they blame him for the harsh rivalry with Barcelona and then also the lack of English or at the very least, the difficulty Spaniards have in learning English. Apparently the reason why there's little subtitling in English language media, such as TV and movies, and instead he wanted to adopt dubbing. He dubbed everything in Spanish. Right, so watching, reading, or listening to various forms of media in a target language is a great way to learn a language and acquire a second language faster. So it makes sense that they feel a little bit behind because they weren't doing that. Let's go ahead and move to living in Madrid. Look at you, little ESL teacher. There's a great metro system that is super reasonable. The single journey tickets depend on how far you go, but it's between a euro 50, two euros. The city metro is connected to the airport as well, but it'll cost you a little more. They offer loads of options for combo tickets if you also want to take the buses, especially the night buses, uh, move around outside of the metro A city or get a monthly pass. The public transportation is really great here. And then of course you also have taxis and Uber. How about the cost of living? Rent for a one bedroom apartment in the city center is around 1,000 euros, but closer to 700 euros when you move out of the city center. A three bedroom in the city center is around 1,700 euros and 1,200 outside of the city center. Living with roommates isn't uncommon and we recommend that you guys check out the website Idealista. Utilities are a little on the high end and cost closer to 130 euros a month. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant is around 12 euros, although you can get it cheaper. It's very common to have lunch deals where you get a couple of courses with a drink. 
there are always great values. A meal for two at a mid-scale restaurant will be closer to 50 bucks. A favorite of mine while there is a restaurant that's a chain called Cien Montaditos. And Cien means 100, and Montaditos are just these small bread-sized rolls, I guess you could say, and they're like little sandwiches. So you can get any type of savory to sweet sandwich, you can get a drink, and you can sit outside and watch the buzz of the city, or sit inside and it's pretty busy normally. So that was one of my places that I liked. There are loads of unique barrios or neighborhoods around Madrid. You'll want to be close to Seoul, the city center, if you want to be right in the action. If you're looking for something quieter, you can definitely be out of the city center and have a more residential feel. The good thing is that you will still be well connected because of the great public transportation. I lived off of the purple line between Pavones and Artilleros in a suburb called Moratalaz. The city center is normally packed with tourists and locals. There's the palace, the famous bear monument, which is a symbol of Madrid, plazas, and more. It's a great place to be if you like the constant buzz. Oh, so Salamanca is a trendier neighborhood, and if you're looking for a quieter place, you'll want to be near Retiro Park. There's a lot of culture in Lava Pies, or if you want to be near the train so you can travel to other parts of Spain or Europe, set up shop near Anton Martin. Since Josh and I live there and have loads of personal experience in the city, we could go on and on about the different neighborhoods and where you should go depending on your lifestyle. However, for the sake of time, we'll just stick with those highlights. But if you're interested in learning more about other places, then comment below and we'll help you out. Yeah, definitely. As far as crime goes, definitely be careful of pickpocketing as that does happen there. It happened to me. <laughs> Like most places, just be aware of your belongings and your surroundings. Don't fall for any of their tricks, where one person might be a decoy while another person is slipping their hand into your pocket. Also remember that if you've had a lot to drink, you're an easy target, and they know that. And it's easy to have a lot to drink in Madrid. <laughs> Before we talk about working in Madrid, we want to take a minute to give a few shout-outs to those who are commenting on our channel and Instagram. Shout-outs! Choi Ming Yu. Thanks for sharing our enthusiasm for the video we just did about Korean quarantine. Trevor was on a mission to marry his Korean fiance and basically he got put into quarantine in a makeshift national facility, I guess, like a hotel. You can see this story here. We'll put it in the description below too. We challenge that if it gets 100 likes in two weeks, then we'll do a follow-up. So see what happens. The two travelers in Mexico love the name and thank you for the comment. We're glad that you liked the interview with Bob about Mexico and that you reached out to us to let us know that you've discovered us and subscribed. We appreciate it a lot. We're on a mission to hit 10K subscribers by the end of the summer. If you want to support our efforts, subscribe and like and share this in other videos. Lastly, for the comments before getting back to working in Madrid. Kenneth Ho commented on our heavily trending video about durian. He's saying that you shouldn't just get a smidgen of the king fruits, but the whole mouthful to get the experience. Ugh. I am not a huge fan of durian. Some other people are. I like the smell. I love it. Mm. I love it. I could eat it weekly. Yeah. So it really depends on the person. Durian. All right. Madrid is a large European city, so that means lots of job opportunities. Now, a big problem right now is they're still suffering from the economic crisis. Spain had been hit hard, which can take a toll on job openings. It's not uncommon for your company to send you to Madrid because of its European presence, but it might be hard to find a job on your own right now. For those of you wanting to move to Madrid on your own, the service industry is a great place to look. Tourism is really big there, so anything having to do in that sector is up for grabs. It will be helpful if you speak multiple languages, and having a high level of Spanish will get you really far in Madrid, which is why you see a lot of expats from Latin America in the city. Yeah, for sure. Everyone is aware of the siesta culture, so don't be surprised if you move to Madrid and your colleagues are ready for a mid-afternoon break. This is ingrained in their culture, and while some might view it as lazy and inefficient, others might view it as relaxing. It's a nice break, right? <laughs> It, it might be hard to get used to this, so if you're working at a business, expect it to be a very relaxed atmosphere. Take that forever you'd like. The hours of operation for businesses might seem odd to you as nothing seems to open too early or stay open too late, and then you have a break in the middle. That can be frustrating when you're trying to get something done, but it might be nice if that's what your company does with all the breaks. Mm. So when looking for a job, find out the hours of operation and really just be open and willing to adapt. Yeah, and it can make it tricky setting up life there. Give yourself like two weeks, I think. Yeah. Also, something cultural to remember is nothing actually happens at the scheduled time. 
happen to me all the time. For example, if you plan a meeting at 11, don't expect it to actually start at that time. You might not even have anyone there at 11. So keep that in mind when you're scheduling things. And this goes outside of the conference room as well. It applies to meeting up with friends. So it's just how it goes. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on what's happening in the world of expats everywhere. On that note, let's quickly let you know what is happening in our world. I recently talked to Trevor, one of our contributors, about being stuck in quarantine. He's in a national facility in South Korea. He's actually still there. He's just finishing up his 14 days. Why is he there, you might ask? Well, his fiance is from South Korea and he went there to get married but wasn't supposed to get stuck in quarantine. They had to postpone their wedding. It's an epic love story, so you gotta check it out. And you'll also get to see what the national quarantine looks like in South Korea. We had an interview from an expat living in Slovakia, so be sure to check that out. And then coming up, we have an interview with an expat who is living in Ho Chi Minh City, so make sure you check that out. Now, Josh and I are hitting the road in the US. Woohoo! We are dying to travel, but we are stuck in the country because of the virus. So things are opening up a little bit here, so we're driving. And we'll be hitting the road up and down the East Coast, and we'll keep you up to date on what's happening in our lives while we travel. Yeah, if the borders were open right now, I think we would be in Mexico or Canada. <laughs> well, yeah, we would be out. <laughs> to be traveling. So now we're moving on to the letter N. So if you're a subscriber, be sure to head over to our community tab page to vote for the next city. If you're not a subscriber, what are you doing? It's time to subscribe. Click the subscribe button to make your vote count. Remember, we post these videos every other Thursday. And that's all for this review preview show. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.